Hello, Sudoku friends, and welcome to a New York Times Hard Sudoku. Today is December 20, 2022. I was looking at a Vietnamese website for Sudokus, and I noticed quite a few players or solvers asked questions as to, for example, uh, look at this cell here. They would plug in a one, for example. And they would then be using some kind of an app that would tell them this is wrong. The one can't go here. And they would ask, why can't the one go here? And that motivates my musings today. Because Sudoku is a game of logic, pure and simple logic. And we are not allowed to enter a digit anywhere without being 100% certain that that digit is the only digit that can go there. In some cases, let's just delete this one. In some cases, we can use pencil marks. So we can say, okay, a one could go here, right? Or maybe a six could go here. Maybe a nine could go here. And a four might also be able to go here. That is an entirely different matter altogether because that is a strategy that we can use to remind ourselves which candidates are possible for any given cell. But we can't just say this is going to be, let's say, a 5 or a 9. This is going to be a 9 and, uh, and think that we get away with it because we most often won't get away with this. We need to be very sure that a 9 can go here before we are allowed to enter it. Otherwise, this is just random trial and error, like throwing dice as the thumbnail for this video suggests. And we don't do that in Sudoku. And that is what makes this type of puzzle so enjoyable because we can get to the end of the puzzle by using logic alone in most cases. In some cases for really difficult puzzles, of course, we do need to enter pencil marks and we need other strategies than just simple logic. We need to know patterns like swordfish and uh, finned X-wings and whatever these strategies are all called. I don't attempt to solve those puzzles on this channel because I think that most of you and most of the solvers in the world for that matter just solve puzzles as a pastime leisure. And those very complicated strategies are beyond most people and frankly, often beyond me as well. So I don't spend time on those. So let's get rid of the offending nine here. I mean, it might be a nine, I don't know. So back to the solve. Let's see what the, this puzzle brings. There's going to be a seven in one of these two cells here because of these sevens. And there's going to be a seven in one of these three cells and in one of those two because of these two here. The threes seem quite, yes, there's going to be a three here because of these two threes, right? So this is going to be a three. And the four, eight and a nine will have to go among those four cells here. But that's not very conclusive. One of these two must be a three because of these threes here. One of these must be a four because we've got these two fours. And one of these must be a six because of these two sixes. It's all well and good, but let's see if we can get a little closer to actually entering a digit. That would be nice. And yes, I found one, the four for this cell because of this four and this four, and this must be a four. A one, two, five, seven, and nine for this row. There's a one, two, seven here. So this is a five or a nine. One of these two cells must be a nine because of the nine here. That forces a nine in one of these two cells and Therefore, one of these two must be a nine. Completely overlooking until now this simple two that is being made possible by this two blocking these two cells and this two blocking these two cells. So this must be a two. 
and uh, that blocks this cell. This two blocks these cells. So a two for row four will have to go here or here, and therefore the two for row six will have to go here or here. Along, by the way, with a seven, we have got a seven already in these two rows. We need to find a seven for one of these three cells. So a two and a seven are two of the three digits that will end up being in these three cells here. This four blocks these three cells. And this four blocks this cell. So this is a four. The last remaining three digits for this row are going to be a three, eight, and a nine. See? Nine, eight, no, I can't solve that, at least not now. What I just said was complete nonsense. Of course I can do something because I just told myself that one of these will have to be a nine, right? None of these can be a nine, making this a nine. I should listen to myself more sometimes. And this eight now forces an eight into this cell and this last digit is going to be a three. Now we got the three covering these two cells and the three covering this cell. So this is a three now. And this three and this three plus these two puts a three in this cell here. And now these two threes block these three cells. Therefore, this cell must be a three. And now we got all the threes in the grid. Having found this three now, we took away a possible square for a two. This two covers these two, see? So this square must be a two. And this two and this two and this two forces a two into this cell here. These now have to be an eight and a five. And there's an eight in the row already. So this is a five and this is the eight. This seven and this seven will eventually land a seven in one of these two cells. This seven and this seven will eventually land a seven in one of these two cells. What these four cells have in common is that they are both located in the first two rows. We need to find a seven for the third row. And since this is a seven or this is a seven, and this is a seven or this is a seven, none of these four cells can therefore be a seven and that makes this a seven. And this seven and this seven, and this seven now leaves only this cell for a seven for the ninth column. And this seven and this seven and this seven now forces a seven to go here. This is now a one or a nine, and so is this, except there is a nine already in this column, forcing a one into this place and a nine that must go here. A few minutes ago, I told myself that one of these cells must be a two and the other must be a seven. We got the seven now. This two blocks this cell and therefore this must be a two. Besides there's a two in this box here, therefore a two couldn't go here in any event. Now we need to find a one and a nine for these two cells, a two and a five for these two. There's a two already in this box, therefore this must be a five and this must be a two. Now the five here and here puts a five, of course, in this cell. And besides the nine that we were looking for here, the other digit is going to be a one. So we got a nine one here, not a five, a nine one and a nine one and a nine one. And because this is a forced nine one. This is a forced nine one. This is a forced nine one. This cannot be a nine or a one because if it were either, it would force this puzzle to have at least two different solutions. And uh, that is not a correct Sudoku. A Sudoku can only have one, only one valid solution. So we know that this cannot be a one and it cannot be a nine. So what could it be then? It couldn't be a two, three, four, five, seven, eight either, but it has got to be a six then, doesn't it? So now this is a one or a nine, as is this, 
this and this. Here's an observation. Look at the 49 here. That rules out a 409 from these three cells, right? Look at the 409 here, and they rule out a 409 from these three cells. So now we have proven that this cell must be a 4 or a 9, and this cell must be a 4 or a 9. While I don't yet know which goes where, I now know that I need to find something for these remaining five cells. I need to find a one, and a one will have to go then in one of these four cells. I need to find a five, a five, and a five here. Also needs to go in these one of these same four cells. A six. This six blocks these cells and this six blocks these cells. So a six could go here or it could go here or it could go here. A seven blocks these seven. These two sevens block all of these five cells. We know that this has got to be a four or a nine and therefore this cell must be a seven. Now this seven and this seven and this seven forces a seven up here in the top row. Now directing my attention to column six. We know this is a one or a nine. And besides the one and a nine, we still need to find a four and an eight. So there's a four and an eight in the bottom row, making this a one and a nine too. So this is a one or a nine. This is a one or a nine. Therefore, this must be a four or an eight. And this must be a four or an eight. Except it can't be a four, can it? Because of the four in the row. So this is an eight. And this is therefore a four. Now we got this four and this four and this four, putting a four in this cell here. And remember how these two cells have to be a four and a nine. Now given this four here, we know that this is a nine and this must be the four. And now these two have to be a nine and a six. We need a four for this third row. It can't go here because of this four. It can't go here because of this four. Therefore, we need to enter it here, like so. These two now have to be a one and a five. One and fives and one and nine seem to be a theme for this puzzle. But at least now we've got this eight blocking these two cells, making one of these two cells an eight. So the ghost eight here and this eight here and the eight in the bottom row forces an eight to go here. And now this eight and this eight and this eight puts an eight here. And we are very close to being done with the eights. Yes, there's an eight here and here, and that of course puts an eight up here. This is now a six or a nine, making this a one and a five, and one and a five here as well. This cell here can be a one, six, and a nine. But it can't be a five, can it, because of the five here. This cell can't be a five because of the five here, nor can this cell because of this five here. Therefore, this must be a five. And that makes this a one, and this must now be a one. These were six and nine, right? That means that this one here must be a one. And with the one here and the one here, that puts a one in this cell and the one here. Therefore, this is a nine and this is a nine and this is a one. I know that's a bit quick, but uh, we've been over these ones and nines and ones and fives a lot of times. This one now forces a one into this cell and this must be a six, making this a six and this a nine. This therefore is a five, making this a five. Look at the five here blocking this cell, right? So this is a five. And these two now have to be a nine and a six. We've got a nine in the row. So the six goes here and the nine here. Nine, I said. 
and that puts a six up here and a nine here. These two still have to be a five and a six. There's a six in the column, making this a five and this a six. It was quite a nice puzzle, but it wasn't really hard, was it? In any event, I hope you liked it and that you will come back for more. Thank you for watching and bye for now.